Uh, let's bring in uh, Deborah Blum from Palm Beach, Florida. She is an attorney experienced in these matters. And uh, I wanted to get, first of all, your opinion on whether Mr. Wood, who has been successful uh, taking these kinds of lawsuits in the past, is overstating his case to the tune of $250 million each. That seems like a fairly significant amount. Is that going to hurt him when he enters this into the court? Definitely not. As an attorney, when you bring a cause of action, you usually aim high and acknowledge that you might end up with a lower amount of damages. He's suing for both reputational damages and punitive damages, which here to me is going to be easy to prove. The media is supposed to have unbiased reporting and they're supposed to fact check. And the media needs to be told and taught a message that you can't just retweet things when you're CNN because everybody follows you or a lot of people follow you and you've injured the reputation of this young man nationally. All right. So it's not just CNN who did that. NBC News did it. Uh, ABC News did it. So he can just go ping, 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 ping. By the time he gets through, it's a billion dollars. Um, a jury, I believe, would be sympathetic to Nick Sandman, I believe, and particularly if this case is heard in Kentucky. Um, so uh, is this family going to walk away with a billion dollars, the Sandman family? I'm not sure how much money they're going to get. I think that at some point it becomes enough. And, you know, I don't even think that they're doing this for the money. They're doing this because Nick Salmon is forever going to come up online as being a racist. You have most of the elements of the libel claim that it was published, that the claim was false, injurious, and unprivileged. The only one that they're really going to have an upward battle or to some degree an upward battle is whether it's false. Because newspapers are allowed to make mistakes. It's just a question of whether it was done with actual malice or not. And as you said, this was really reckless or, you know, that they didn't fact yeah, check. That if, they... if you're a famous person like I am, uh, it, you have to show malice. But if you're not famous like Nick, it's just reckless disregard for the truth. I don't think there's a malice component to that, but I could be wrong. You're the lawyer. Well, either way, what it hinges on is whether, as you're saying, whether he's a public figure or not. He's not. So what this what, what CNN is going to argue, though, or the Post, is that he became a public figure. So he's a quasi-public figure. They so made he should him a still public figure. They, they did, but that CNN... That argument is, you know, look, you made it because you chose to put him on the front page, and you chose to use a videotape that was partial. You didn't use the whole tape. Um, and that's Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it, it was known to CNN after at least the day, maybe two days, when they still had these tweets going, that there was an investigation into whether this was true or not. And they just used the portion of a video that, as time went on, became questionable whether that was the full video. And they should have looked into it. They have the obligation to fact check. And they have to see if anybody on the ground could tell them about it. And the CNN anchors were tweeting negative things, hate, hatred words against this young man. Yeah, what they did and, was you know, they do it what they always do. They don't check out anything. They throw their stupid panel on a bunch of people who are unqualified and don't know what happened. And then they spout off because they hated Trump and a kid had a Trump hat. Um, and well, that's what they did. So if you look at the coverage, and I have, it's all about Trump. It's not about Nick. It's all about Trump. That Trump incited this, that the, the, the kid, people who follow Trump are like this. They attack Native Americans or this or that and the other thing. So my next question then becomes, Wood is going to be able to prove his case beyond a reasonable doubt. And the jury, as I said, is going to be sympathetic to a 16-year-old who, as you rightly pointed out, life is altered negatively. So does CNN and Washington Post write a check for $50 million and hand it to the Sandman family? Is that what they're going to do? You know, I think that's going to be a question for his attorney to determine how much monetary compensation well, would, would the news vehicles do that, or will they take it in and try to win it? 
They might take it in because I do think that they're going to argue that this wasn't done with reckless disregard for the truth, that it was a big mistake, that they then did put put out retractions. I mean, I don't think that they're going to get there and be able to show what they did was enough, because I think if you have anchors from major networks tweeting ill words about a young man and not fact checking it themselves or making sure that somebody on your team fact checked it, that's what your obligation is to do as a journalist. Yeah, so they never do that. I mean, they, all they do is take look, the game now in the news industry is if something's online. All right. So Bill O'Reilly did this, and there it is online. Then all the news agencies just report it. They don't check it. They just, oh, look at this. New York Times says that they don't check it. And so they're relying on the accuracy of people who are obviously um, have an agenda. It's, just, it's crazy. So you think that this is a winner overall for the Sandman family, that they will get a lot of money, and if they take it to a jury, they'll probably get more than if CNN and the Washington Post settled. The jury is going to be furious and give them the, the max, I would think. You know, juries always surprise you. Usually they do the right thing, but in terms of monetary damages, you might think that you're going to get more and then you get less and vice versa. So I, I do think that if it stays in K Kentucky, federal court in Kentucky, yes, you're yeah. going to have a sympathetic jury. You know, even in New York City where I practice, if you have a criminal trial in the Bronx versus Manhattan, you're much more likely to win in the Bronx. So a lot of it does have to do with the jurisdiction, which is going to be something that CNN and the Post, their, their lawyers take into account. Right. All right, Deborah, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much.